you or someone you love needs help for an addiction, where do you turn? Foundations Recovery Network offers individualized treatment for the whole person. Our goal goes beyond short-term sobriety. We address substance abuse and co-occurring mental health issues together, providing a firm foundation for long-term recovery. The first step is often the hardest, but we're here with a free assessment, insurance information, and treatment options. Our confidential helpline is available 24-7, so call 877-714-1318 and discover the Foundation's Recovery Network difference today. This is Rich Roll, and you're listening to Silver Guy Radio. Yo, what's up? Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks to Humans for bringing us in. Thanks to you for supporting the show. Uh, we recently launched the How to Navigate the First 90 Days of Sobriety digital podcast course. And I wanted to do a quick episode today and just talk about it a little bit. Uh, before we do that, be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com for past episodes and resources. Uh, you can also connect with us on Instagram, at realthatsoberguy, and on Twitter, at Shane Raymer. Uh, we got a couple of live shows coming up. Uh, one is this Saturday. Uh, December 1st at Journey Coffee Company starts at 7 p.m. It's in Vacaville, California. We have special guest Wordsmith from Neighborhood Hope Dealer joining us. Uh, and my good homie Philip Wright will also be there. We'll be sharing some stories. We'll have a live Q&A, a uh, little, little recovery talk, and we're going to have some fun. Uh, and then also uh, Shane Raymer and Mark Saratella present That Sober Guy podcast live at the Hollywood Improv. That's January 20th with special guests Darren Prince and Brandon Novak. Uh, be sure to get your tickets for that. Uh, it's definitely going to sell out. And so uh, you can go to thatsoberguy.com slash live shows uh, for information on either show. If you'd like to get tickets directly uh, for the improv show on January 20th, you can go to improv.com slash Hollywood and get your tickets there. Uh, do you need some help? Does a loved one need some help? Or do you just have some questions that you, uh, that you need answered? Uh, you can call Foundations Recovery Network. They have a confidential and private line. Uh, that's at 877-714-1318. They also have nationwide residential and outpatient facilities. And uh, they can answer any questions that you have about your own situation, about somebody that you love uh, who's struggling with addiction, with alcoholism. Uh, we've been working with foundations for a couple of years now. I just want to give them a huge shout out. They really are a phenomenal organization and a great group of people, not only just to work with um, uh, from, from a business perspective, uh, but just in the recovery community and the work that they do with uh, the heroes, uh, all of their six K's. Um, they just have a great organization and really do care. So I'd encourage anyone out there, if you are looking for a resource and like I said, if you just need to ask some questions uh, and you want to speak to someone, you can give them a call. Once again, that number is 877-714-1318. All right. So like I said, this is just going to be a quick little episode, a little special bonus episode for the week. And uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about the course that we just launched. It's called How to Navigate the First 90 Days of Sobriety. Uh, basically, here's how it started. I went back and I looked at some of uh, the old podcast, some of the episodes, the, um, the amount, the number of downloads that each podcast had, uh, had received. And one thing I noticed was the most downloaded episode was how to navigate the first 30 days of sobriety. And it was ep an episode that Seth and I did together and kind of a light bulb went off at that moment. And I said, man, that is such a great topic. Um, why don't I extend that out to 90 days? And why don't I get some of the you know, people that I know that I'm involved with, whether it's in podcasting um, or, or uh, just recovery in general, why don't I get those people together and talk to them and talk about some of the things that they've learned in their own experience in the first 90 days or, or early sobriety. And then also professionals like Dr. Ken Starr um, or Dr. Tara Lynn So who work in as specialists and they work with people in recovery and uh, they have their own things that they've seen from a professional standpoint and um, their own advice and things to share uh, that can offer somebody out there some assistance who's going through that early time, which is so crucial in, uh, in recovery. And to that point, my own personal 
story comes into this a little bit because I went to rehab and when I got home from rehab, it was extremely confusing. It was, it was a very confusing time in my life, um, in Jess's life, you know, as, as us being a married couple and trying to come back together. All we knew for a long time was partying together. That's how we connected. That's how we uh, spent a lot of our time together. That's, that's just what we did. That's the lifestyle that we lived. And so here I go off to, uh, to rehab for 30 days get sober and I get home and I'm supposed to be like, I remember even when Jess picked me up, you know, her and Lucy, um, man, what a beautiful thing. I just had a quick flashback of that, of just being able to hop in that car and just say, I don't know where we're going, but let's get the hell out of here right now. Um, it was a beautiful thing. And, um, I, uh, you know, so, so we get out and I, I got out of rehab and then I get home and it's like, man, who am I now? who, you know, who is Shane Raymer? And that was the, really the beginning of this new life, this new journey down a life of recovery, a life of sobriety, um, you know, and, and thank God, uh, with, with the help of God, my family and 12 step program, um, community, all that stuff that we talk about in this course, you know, I've been able to put together over five years clean and sober today. And I still take it one day at a time you know, and I try to do the next right thing, the next, uh, or put one foot in front of the other. And that's kind of what keeps me going. But those first 90 days were so confusing. Um, you know, and I'll share a quick story. And then I want to get into some of what the course is about. I'll, I'm going to share some of the topics and, and what some of the content has has to offer in the course. Um, I got home and I remember, and I've told this story on the podcast before too, so if you've heard it, I apologize, but it, it really does, um, I think, paint a picture of what these first 90 days were like for me and how confusing they really were. And if I would have had something, you know, and I did have some resources, definitely. I mean, I had some phenomenal instruction from Azure Acres when I got out. They talk about 90 and 90, 90 meetings, 90 days. You find the sponsor. Some of the foundational stuff um, but still, even knowing that stuff, just trying to find who I am, who I am as a person, who, isn't, who I am as a man, as a father, as a friend, as a husband, as a son, all that stuff was, man, I was just like, what is going on right now? I felt like my head was, was kind of spinning. And uh, one of the things I think that, that really shows that is, you know, I'm, I'm, I love punk rock, man. I've, I've been going to shows since I was 15 years old. I've played in a bunch of bands. I had a, a a great time doing music and I still pick the guitar up every now and again and, and get to play a little bit and write some music and play some music. Um, I wear Chuck Taylor's Vans, Dickies, hoodies, t-shirts. Like I've never worn country stuff and I'll put, I put country stuff and I don't know why I even said that. That's really stupid of me. So I apologize for that country stuff. I'm talking about Wranglers, cowboy boots, cowboy hats. That's country, right? Old school country. I'm talking Merle Haggard, Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, uh, George Jones, that old classic stuff. And I, I know it even goes further back than that, but that's kind of what, what I think of as, as old school country. Um, you know, I never wore that stuff. Okay. I never, and I always, I, I wish I could to be, I'll be a hundred percent honest with you. I wish I could, man, my phone is getting blown up right now. I apologize. Um, I wish I could go out right now and go buy some cowboy boots and some Wranglers again. And I probably could, but I, that's not me. I would feel awkward in it. And what happened was when I got home from rehab, a couple weeks in, I was sitting in the parking lot. I think I had Jess. Jess had ran in the grocery store and I ran into Seth and he comes over to the car and I said, what's up, man? Oh man, it's good to see you. How you doing? And he looks in the car and he goes, are you wearing cowboy boots? And I said, yeah, man, I got some Justin's man, some Justin boots. He goes, are those Wranglers you're wearing? <laughs> I said, yeah, man, I picked up some Wranglers. I think I had a hunt, a camo hunting vest on. He just looked at me like, who in the shit are you right now? Like, what is going on? And I decided I was going to be this working man. I think I even bought some new work boots and I was going to put my head down and I was going to work and I was just going to just work, I guess, and try to be sober. And not that there's anything wrong with that at all. I think that's a great plan to some extent, work hard, show up, do your best, you know, provide for your family, like no doubt. But the fact that I was trying to like, like create this new persona, which really didn't, really wasn't me. 
it really did show, I think, how confused I was at that time. I didn't have any direction. And, and you know, I think that that comes in time and that it comes with being patient and showing up and doing, you know, what's next. And eventually, to, just to wrap the story up before I move on, you know, I eventually, the Wranglers went back in the drawer. I took the, the cowboy boots back. The hunting vest eventually got donated. I kept it for a couple of years, though. I think I just got rid of it about a, a year ago, maybe. Finally, I, I parted ways with the old camo hunting vest that I've never hunted a damn day in my life. Um, you know, and I, I probably, um, well, I don't know if I would or not. I don't know if I, I should or not. That's a whole different topic. But I let go of that stuff, you know, and I finally, over time, started to started to learn more about myself by showing up, going to meetings, working a program, consistently staying sober, doing what I was told, finding a sponsor, all that stuff, you know, which eventually has led to, uh, uh, you know, to where I am now and still continuing to do that stuff, still continuing to learn, still can, uh, continuing to be jacked up and mess up sometimes. Um, but just a little bit further on in my own, um, my own path or my own journey, and I learn a little bit faster now when I do mess stuff up. And that comes with time and practice and patience. So what I'm getting at here is in the course, what we did is we really tried to share some of the stuff that can help save people time. Like if I would have had some of this stuff early on, um, you know, I had some of it, but it, maybe it didn't make sense to me. What we hope to do here is have people share their own thoughts, their own opinions, their own experiences, their own professional opinions on what they've seen work, what they've seen that hasn't worked, you know, for, for certain people and kind of compile that all together and allow people to go through it at their own uh, pace um, and just kind of learn as, as they go. And I always say this, like there's no magic wand, you know, that's going to just save your ass from uh, not drinking or not doing drugs or being, a, you know, I, I thought that for a long time that one day, man, I'll just stop. I'll just stop doing that. Or one day I'll get this phenomenal job, you know, in this great career and it's just going to magically happen. And that's just not the case. Like with anything we do in life, we have to put the work in. And first, before putting the work in, we have to surrender to, ever, to whatever it is, you know, God, a higher power, whatever it is that you feel um, necessary and giving up control to. And then we got to show up every day. And then we start doing the work and, 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 we, and we're patient and we continue on showing up every single day. And that's really what this is about. So I would say if you're looking for a quick answer, you know, hey, oh yeah, here, I just, I need to get sober real quick to get out of trouble with my wife or get out of trouble with my job or, you know, I need, I just need to do this real quick. Like that's not really what this is about. So don't, you know, don't even waste your time with that. This is about being open to learning new things and being open to, to uh, listening to what's worked for other people and also being open to trying new things and figuring out what works best for you certain programs and certain things work great for one person. They might not work great for another person and vice versa. So over the time, I've had to really find what works best for me. And I've done that by listening to other people, learning, continuing to educate myself, showing up, go, you know, working a program, having a sponsor, all that stuff. I, I feel like a broken record sometimes, but it's a lot of, it's not the sexy stuff that a lot of people think. You know, it's really the foundational stuff. And that's, that's some of the stuff that we get into in, uh, in the course. And we do get into some other stuff like how to have fun, how to have a good time, how to, how to prevent relapse. Um, you know, and is there a, a solid 100% answer to prevent relapse? No, there's not because everybody's different. But there's some things along the way that can help you be aware of what's going on um, around you. So let's, uh, let's get into some of this course right now. And so I can kind of give you an example of what some of this stuff uh, is, um, and, uh, and we'll go from there. It starts out, number one, it's called How to Navigate the First 90 Days of Sobriety. Okay, it's a digital podcast video course. It starts out with a short introduction by yours truly. You know, there's a promo video on there. You can go to thatsoberguy.com, click on Courses, 
and the promo video is on there if you want to if you want to see that it's like 52 seconds or something it'll just give you a quick little rundown there's also a learn more button where you can actually go look at some of the course some of the uh descriptions um and uh uh the logo what it looks like where it's hosted at all that kind of stuff so it starts with the first um the first thing starts with an introduction uh then it goes into my first 90 days sober and that is 65 minutes it's a 65 minute share from myself i started it off i went through um some of the stuff that i just talked about a little bit about you know being confused and what that was like and then also into my recovery and what that looked like then and what that looks like today and um i'm clicking on this right now because i want to go back into some of the some of the uh, talking points here of this 65 minute session um, that I opened up with, you know, I was tired of fighting myself, waking up every day saying I wouldn't drink or do drugs only to be high by noon. I was tired, angry, and broken. You know, I talk about going to rehab, what that was like, um, you know, and then we get into some of the more foundational stuff that I've already mentioned, um, community, sponsorship, you know, what that looks like, how to, how to find a sponsor, um, relationships, uh, a big one, finding passion in doing something. I talk a little bit about that, about how the podcast and how I created the podcast and how that really helped to get me through some tough times. I actually think I underestimate, um, and I think a lot of us underestimate the power of when we find something that we really enjoy to do that can help keep us on track and help keep us going through some of the uh, times in our life, whether it's through, uh, through sobriety or just life in general, when life uh, throws stuff at us, uh, that, that can be difficult. Um, so that's the first one. The second one, uh, we jump into is ment mentorship and coaching. Uh, and that is by my good friend, Omar Pinto from the share podcast. Many of you who listen to podcasts, on a, a regular basis may know Omar and may listen to the share podcast. They have the share space, which is a recovery life coaching uh, community. Um, Omar is a phenomenal dude. He's a great guy. He's got a lot of recovery experience and um, he's doing some great things in the recovery community. And in, in that session, he talks about meditation and prayer, how important it is, how it can change your life. Uh, some tips to start meditation and prayer. Um, how to find uh, the gift of presence, being in the moment, and then also how your ego can destroy yourself. <laughs> I mean, that's a huge one. And, and for those who haven't been in the rooms in a 12-step recovery-based program, ego is something that we talk about a lot. And it talks about it a lot in the big book. It talks a lot about it in, um, in a lot of the content, recovery content, is how that can, can really take a toll and um, how it's something that we really need to look out for. So we discussed that a little bit. Um, man, and then how Omar shares some of his own story too and how, a, a, you know, how his life was saved uh, by the gift of recovery. Um, so after Omar, we go into Dr. Ken Starr. Dr. Ken Starr, we got a doctor's opinion. Um, he is, and I'm just looking at some of this right now, going back over some of this. Um, I met uh, Dr. Ken Starr down in uh, San Diego at the Foundations uh, Conference down there, Innovations in Recovery. Uh, awesome thing. We got, we got invited back again this year, so I'm super pumped about that. I think we're heading down there in April sometime to do some live podcasting and connect again with everybody down in, uh, in the recovery community down there. Uh, but I met Dr. Ken Starr there. His booth happened to be right across from mine. And had him on the podcast. We really hit it off. He's a great dude. He's doing some really cool things in um, uh, in recovery, for recovery. Uh, when we talk about NAD therapy, he has a clinic down in San Luis Obispo um, that provides NAD treatments. And if you don't know what NAD is, I'm not going to try to get into it and explain it to you because I am not the professional on it. Dr. Ken Starr is. But what it is is, is intravenous infusions. And um, there, it's, it's showing some amazing uh, effects of doing this, not only for uh, recovery, but also for anti-aging and some other things too. And I'll, I'll kind of save that for the professional to talk about because I'm totally going to slaughter it. But he also gives a doctor's opinion on addiction and recovery. What are some of the feelings and symptoms that you can expect in early sobriety? And then what are some solutions to dealing with some of those feelings and symptoms? 
um, a lot of stuff on there using NAD for detox, an introduction to NAD therapy, what's the strategy, and then also talks about pain, how do we sit with pain a little bit, just some great things on there uh, also. Um, going down the list here too, my good homie Dave Buckner joined, uh, joined this, uh, this podcast video course. Uh, if you don't know Dave, uh, he's been on the podcast a couple of times. He's also from Vacaville like myself. Um, he's one of the founding members of the, uh, of, of one of my favorite bands, Papa Roach. Uh, they were a local band that started out in Vacaville who ended up just going on to, uh, still producing amazing music and content and just having really successful careers in the music business, which is a, a extremely tough thing to do for as long as they've done it for. And Dave was one of the original founding members of that. And like we talk about, or like, like we have talked about, like Dave shared on the show, and also like we hear about, you know, that rock star lifestyle is a tough one. And a lot of guys and ladies out there who are in that industry uh, end up struggling with addiction. Um, you know, so Dave shares some of his story and uh, he also gives some practical tips for meditation, how meditation works, uh, why it's important. Uh, here's some resources on how you can start meditating. Um, it's, uh, it's, he, you know, he, he talks about uh, refuge recovery, which is a program that he works. And I know I've mentioned that on the show before. So a lot of good tips, a lot of good thoughts there, uh, and a little bit of share from the good homie, Dave Buckner. Uh, sponsorship, the top three priorities in early recovery. This one's with my sponsor, Buddy C. You may have heard him on the show before. Buddy comes on and, and, and really gives uh, some great thoughts and some great experience. He's got over um, uh, how many years, 10 years of continuous sobriety. Uh, he's been in and kind of in, I guess, in a, a 12 step recovery for over 16 years. Um, but he's a great dude. He's a phenomenal sponsor. He's a, a, a great friend. Uh, and you know, without buddy in my corner, I couldn't do anything that I've been doing in the last couple of years, because when I, when I finally did get a sponsor, um, you know, that, that actually I started working the steps with my recovery just went to that whole, whole other level, I think of just, um, being, being dialed in and really learning and, and continuing, um, to, uh, to go down a path of growth, I guess. And, and that, you know, something new happens every single day, which is great. But buddy talks about daily routine. Um, he also talks about what does a sponsor do? What is the sponsor's job? How do you find the right sponsor or mentor? Um, how do they help in early recovery? You know, I mentioned the God thing too at the beginning of, of, uh, of an episode in here. Um, was that on this episode? I get so confused. I talk about this stuff so much. I heard an episode earlier, but regardless of that, Buddy breaks that down a little bit. Some people in, in uh, recovery have um, some thoughts and their own opinions on the God thing. Some, some people are for it. Some people aren't for it. Whatever, whatever it is to you, um, I think that Buddy gives a really good take and a really good fair understanding of it. Um, and then being open-minded, a spiritual awakening. Those are just some of the things that, that we talk about in, uh, in, in Buddy's um, uh, conversation, Buddy and I's conversation on, uh, on the course. Um, we also bring on Amy Dressner. Amy's awesome. Amy's relapsed like 16,000 times. She's not afraid to, uh, <laughs> to talk about it. And that's really what she gets into on this. Um, Amy is a, um, a former professional stand-up comic. Uh, she has performed at all uh, recovery, or, or all recovery, all um, uh, comedy clubs, a whole bunch of the comedy store, the Laugh Factory, the improv, all kinds of cool stuff. She's also a writer. She's written a book. Um, and you know, she talks about the book more on, on the podcast. I think we talk about it a little bit in here. Um, but what to do with the urge when it hits you, um, how to sit with your feelings. And then of course, why we titled it relapse, chronic relapse. Like, how do you deal with that? What is that? Um, how do you look out for it? Um, she talks about personal responsibility and why service work is really at the top of, of the list as far as uh, priority goes. Um, she was in and out of rehab. Um, you know, got a really amazing story, a really funny story at times too, but obviously really serious too. Um, you know, and then being a woman in recovery and learning how to live and communicate with other women, 
was also something that she touched on that, that was super important for women out there who are in recovery or who are trying to navigate through recovery. Uh, I'm not a woman. So thank God, Amy, um, you know, was able to give some of those, uh, some of those thoughts and, and advice on that. Um, then we had my good buddy, TJ Woodward come in and TJ talks about how to deal with shame. How many of us have felt shame um, or guilt? I know guilt and shame for me was a big one right off of, um, right out of the gate. Well, I would probably say I still definitely suffered from some of that in early recovery, but leading up to that, and I got to take a drink real quick. My voice was um, really starting to feel a little raspy, <clears throat> um, but the, the the shame, the guilt really came on hard right before I went to rehab that last year that really progressed up. And TJ does a really great job of explaining what toxic shame is and how to deal with it. Uh, he's experienced it firsthand um, and he is uh, a great inspirational speaker uh, he's a, a, a recovery awakening coach. Um, he's also the creator of Conscious Recovery. He's from the Bay Area, from San Francisco. So he's a local local guy out here uh, from, from near where I'm at. And he's just an all-around good dude. You may have heard him on the podcast before. But um, one of the, I think one of the big points that he, that he hit on is the three root causes of addictive behavior. And so we went through some of that in this, uh, in this chapter of the course uh, where he jumps into that as well as how to deal with shame and then what conscious recovery is. Um, and then mindfulness, dealing with fear. What else is possible? I think a, uh, a small car with a very loud motor just drove by and screamed in my ear. Good Lord, that was loud. Um, but also traumatic experiences. Uh, I know he jumped into that a little bit and talked about traumatic experiences, like how that, um, you know, how we're affected by that in uh, from as a child perspective, and then how that bleeds into us growing into adulthood. Um, TJ, let's see, I'm just looking at this right now, man, we have so much good content on here. It's kind of crazy. I haven't done this yet, really like gone through each one and, and talked about it like I'm doing right now. And oh, here he comes again. Here comes guy with a loud car. Why do, why do people drive cars that are loud as shit like that? Especially ones that sound like lawnmowers. That is not cool. Not cool to me at least. Now you want to get a loud car. You need something like an old like Chevelle or something that just rumbles or like an old uh, fleet side truck or an old Camaro that just is, just is loud and makes your chest just thump. That is acceptable to me. But these little ass cars that sound like lawnmowers, they drive me insane right now. See, look, I'm getting all off track. I'm starting to get angry. See, this is how, this is how podcasts, this is how recovery programs, this is how, how to navigate the first 90 days of sobriety. This, you know, that kind of stuff will help myself and anyone else out there deal with some of the feelings that are popping up even uh, for me right now, like a boner in sweatpants with little cars that are loud as shit driving by my house while I'm trying to record something and ruining it. Let me take a breath right now. Woo. All right. But I haven't. I haven't went through a lot of this stuff. And it's amazing how much content is on here. There, there's really some good stuff. Uh, Paul Churchill. Let's talk about Paul Churchill from the Recovery Elevator real quick. Paul and I connected. He's actually from um, near where I'm at, too, in the Santa Rosa area. Um, and now is out in Bozeman, Montana, and doing some great things in the recovery community. Started the Recovery Elevator podcast, um, you know, a little bit, I, I think just a few months after that sober guy started, and that's how we ended up connecting. Um, he's got a great story himself of recovery and what he's doing. And in, in this uh, chapter or, or episode of the, of the course, Paul talks about community, why community is so important. He also talks about his personal experience experience with anxiety and how he learned how to deal with it. Um, he shares his light bulb moment that helped him get sober and stay sober and then how to get uncomfortable, which I think is a big one. A lot of us get stuck in certain spots where we're so comfortable because why is that? Because it feels comfortable. It's our safe place. We feel good where we're at, whether it's in our own little place at home um, or our little 
same routines that we're in. Um, but I'm, I'm here to, to tell you, well, I'm not here to tell you shit, actually. I hate when I phrase stuff like that. So let me kind of back up and redo that. I'm here to share from my own experience that when I'm comfortable, I'm not growing at all. Um, it's, it's just how it works. I'm staying stuck. I'm in the same spot that I'm in because I'm not out there getting uncomfortable trying new things. And so Paul really dives into that a little bit and talks about how he stepped out into that. Um, it's, it's, uh, you know, and then, oh, he also goes into 90 meetings in 90 days, which is a huge thing. I've talked about that a little bit before I've mentioned it before. What it is, is you hit 90, 90 meetings in your first 90 days. And, um, he has some tips to share on that and what worked for him, uh, in, in doing that and what didn't work for him too. Cause I don't, I don't recall that everybody's always perfect at that, but what is important is that you have a goal set and you try to do your best to reach that goal. Um, the last thing, uh, too, of course, like many of the, the guests on this, um, on this course, they share what life is like today. So Paul goes into that a little bit too. And, uh, he's got a great podcast, recovery uh, com. uh, you can just find it on, on, um, uh, on, uh, iTunes, Spotify, all that, all that kind of stuff too. So. Um, thanks to, thanks to Paul. Thanks to everybody too. I mean, I know I'm kind of going through these and everyone's a little bit different. Um, you know, uh, everyone's got different content to add, but it's, you know, when they come together like this, I'm just seeing this as a whole for the first time. And it's really freaking cool. Um, Dr. Tara Lynn. So talks about brain health. Um, this was, this was great because the, I, I really learned a lot in this and, um, you know, I, I learned some things about amino acid therapy. How does it work? What is it? Um, and then I think this is a huge one for anybody, but I know it's huge for me. We talked about healthy eating habits and how important it is and how that, how, how that ties into being healthy, not only um, physically, but mentally, obviously why it's titled brain health. Um, what does that look like? You know, how does that tie into helping us to stay sober, getting exercise, eating, trying to cut out sugar, which I'm not very good at all the time. Um, three, the three top tips for brain health, what can you do? Um, and then sleep, how important is sleep in recovery? She dives into that a little bit. Um, one of the big things too, I'm looking at here at towards the end of this that I just, um, uh, remembered that we talked about too, is how to turn your brain off before bed. Uh, man, I lay in bed sometimes. And when I wake up, I have a hard time going back to sleep because my brain just automatically starts going. And so, so uh, Dr. Tara Lynn dives into how to turn that off and actually get some good sleep uh, for the night. And then last, and, and I'm not covering everything. There's more stuff in here too. And you can see that if you go to that sober and click on courses and, uh, and, and see um, some of the more talking points of, of what is covered in the course. Um, but what a daily routine should look like. We should all be in a daily routine. Uh, really, whether you're in recovery or not, you should have some sort of scheduled thing that you're doing on the daily, um, you know, at least attempting to do on the daily to keep you on track. That's a huge, huge thing. Um, and then the last part of the regular part of the course, man, my good homie, Larry Hagner from the Good Dad Project. What a good dude, a, a great man. Um, started a, a beautiful thing called the Good Dad Project, a strong community of fathers who all share uh, this, uh, a set of values. Uh, he's the author of the dad's edge. Uh, and he also hosts the dad's edge podcast. Um, so basically Larry's story started as a 90 day alcohol free challenge. Um, and he gave up drinking for one year. And so he talks about that. Uh, he talks about what that was like, why he started with a challenge, what that entailed, and then how that continued on for him for a year. Um, we talk about how Larry has fun and, and, and not, we talk about how Larry is having fun and not drinking. Does that make sense? I almost psyched myself out there and stuttered about on it, but um, <laughs> how to handle social situations, situation, situations, man, Woo. a lot of stuff right now. My, my mind's kind of, uh, kind of spinning a little bit. I'm just like, gosh, this is just a lot of content, a lot of good stuff on here. Strength and mindset, making a commitment and sticking to it. Exercise. Larry's in like 
some of the best shape that I've ever seen a dude. I think Larry's 40, 41. Uh, and dude's just ripped. He's in solid shape. He's got a, a you know, three boys, um, you know, a, a family, a wife that he takes care of and he does all this stuff. And he talks about how he continues to do that, deals with stress, um, the temptation to go back to drinking. That's an important thing too. Um, and then what your kids think about your drinking or if you're not drinking. Uh, and then he also talks about the importance of a daily routine. I know I got into that with him because he has a pretty set daily routine that he likes to, uh, that he likes to roll with. Um, so that's a little bit of, of detail there about the first 10 chapters of the course. Okay. Then what I'm just going to lightly skim over here are all the bonus podcasts. I think there's nine of them on here. Um, you got how to reach out for help. Three tips to help you not drink tomorrow. The first 30 days sober with Shane Raymer and Seth Manter. Um, five things I would say to my newly sober self. What to expect when going to your first meeting. That's a, that's a big one. We got a lot of feedback on that. I get a lot of emails about that. Man, what's a meeting like? How do I even go? How do I get there? Like, what do I do once I'm there? What is it like? What should I look for? What should I, is there, should I be scared? Um, you know, that's a, that's a really, really important one. Uh, how do I find my identity? I have no fucking clue how to find your identity for you. I really had no clue how to find my own. But eventually, and I think I'm still kind of finding it. I'm working my way through it. But I know a hell of a lot better today who I am now than I did five, you know, five and a half years ago when I was still out there running amok, being stupid and, and drinking and, and using drugs. Um, fight for your serenity. Fight for your serenity. That, that really, to me, showing up and doing the work. Um, and then how to work the steps with the sponsor. You know, I think that was a good, a good podcast to kind of outline and there's no, it's not perfect. You know, there, it's just not, it's not this, um, this perfect thing because different sponsors, different people do things differently, but it, it, it gives a basic outline of what that looks like, what you can expect. Here's some of the work that I did. Here's how, you know, how I did it. And then the last one uh, of the bonus podcast is get your ass motivated. I'm hyped on hope and uh, really a motivating podcast to help, to help kind of light a fire under your ass. I know it lit one under mine when I was doing that podcast. I remember, I remember titling in that hyped on hope just cause I, I got so pumped up and just talking about recovery. Um, and then the last two things on here, the 90 day sober journal, it's a 90 day sober um, journal PDF that you can track your daily progress with. Um, let me open this guy up here real quick so I can just take a look at it. But basically every day, a journal is very powerful to track what you're doing day in and day out. And it also serves as, as a great reminder and record to go back and reflect on. I just picked my nose on camera. What the hell is wrong with me? Oh, let me, let me look at this real fast here. So we have, yeah, the 90 day sober, sober journal, um, starts with a date. Today's affirmations, I am, I will, I can. Uh, I'm grateful for this. One thing I can do to stay sober today. What would make today great? Um, it's got a, a, a schedule, a daily non-negotiables, you know, to mark off. Did you pray? Did you meditate? Did you exercise? Are you eating healthy? Uh, where's your support group? Did you check in with them? Are you doing any service work today? Um, just some daily things to kind of help keep you on track. And then the last thing is the meeting and resource guide. Um, this has meetings and resources for you. Um, we put the, the AA finder, the NA finder, uh, foundations is on here. Uh, the celebrate recovery meeting finder, the refuge recovery meeting finder. And then of course, uh, you can join the sober guy, sober girl, private Facebook group with over 600 members in it, uh, to, uh, go on and help hold accountability, ask questions. Um, Jess and I pop in there sometimes. I know buddies in there. Uh, I know, um, you know, there's some great posts going on in there too. Uh, and then any of the meeting finders, basically what those are is you can click like this one I'm looking at is for, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. You can click on, um, the link that's in there and, uh, it'll take you directly to the site and you can just type your city and you can find out where all the meetings are in your area. Uh, so just a little resource guide there to, uh, to help you out. That's kind of what it looks like. Um, it's a, it's a lot longer of a rundown, I think, than I planned to do, but what the hell? I mean, might as well give you guys some details about what it's about and see, see if it's something that, uh, that interests you. 
Um, you can go to that sober uh, to check it out, to get more information. Uh, there's also a bunch of other stuff on that sober of course, as well. We've put out over 200 and I think we're on 37, 237 podcasts. Um, there's some, uh, our social media stuff's on there. You can find us at real, that sober guy on Instagram, uh, at Shane Raymer on Twitter. Uh, man, I hope this, uh, helped to answer some of the questions we've been getting about the course, what it is, um, you know, what it's about, how it can help, who are the people involved in it? Um, and kind of why we did it. I was confused as shit when I got out of rehab and in my first 90 days. And, um, you know, this, this, I think helps, um, you know, answer some of the thoughts and some of the things and, uh, some of the guidance that, uh, that I might've needed and that, you know, would have helped me along the way, uh, in my first uh, 90 days of early recovery. So thank you again for tuning in today. Um, check us out at that sober Once again, peace, love, and respect. Hope you like the beanie today. It's cold in Northern California. Oh no. Thank you.